<laughs> Glory. Well, you all look better than you first came in. I can tell you that. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody came in dragging their stuff. It's called dirty laundry. <laughs> well, we just went through the refiner. <laughs> we got washed by the blood, healed by the stripes, filled with the spirit, armed and dangerous. Ready to go. Ready to leave the old man so the new man has his way. Praise be to God. What a time to be alive. You know, check that out. What a time to be alive. So many things are going on. It's phenomenal. God is answering prayer. There is a move of God that you have never seen like this before. And it's going to increase, increase, increase. How many of y'all want to be a part of it? Amen. We are entering the largest harvest that will ever will be. It's a harvest of souls. Why? Because Jesus is getting the harvest before he returns. <laughs> Amen? Would you turn to the book of Revelation in chapter 3? Revelation chapter 3. flow rivers of living water. It's called joy. Amen. Joy of the Lord is our strength. And in his presence is joy. That means you made connection. If you're not joyful, you didn't make connection. Amen? Then you're still miserable. And you're trying to get things out of the world to bring fulfillment, and it just doesn't work. Amen. Money, relationships, fame, fortune, none of that satisfies. Even having kids doesn't satisfy. You can have miracle signs and wonders and still not be satisfied until you make connection with the presence of the King of glory. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 3, verse 14. Let's speak it, please. And to the angel of the church of the Lord, the seeing's right. These things says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. I know that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, this is the state that the body of Christ has followed. Fell, fallen into lukewarm and God is trying to bring a fire to the body of Christ amen it comes from the head if the head's not on fire the rest won't be amen Jesus is our head if you're connected amen if you're connected to his presence you're connected to his word you're connected to his truth you're connected to the anointing you're on fire and you live and you know that you can't sustain anything without being connected. If you're truly connected. See, you can be connected by false connection, by thought. You may think you're connected, but your fruits will show whether you are or not. What comes out of your mouth, what your attitude is, who you trust, where your trust is. All of these things will show where you're connected. If you're still going to the places and associating with people you shouldn't, you're disconnected. Amen? If you're still doing those same old things and you're staying in that cycle, you're disconnected. Jesus came to make an exchange on that cross so that you and I can get from disconnect to connect. From fear to trust. From sickness and diseases to healing. Amen. From our presence. Look at our presence stinks. He wants to exchange our presence for his presence. Oh, our will for his will. Our thoughts for his thoughts. Everything there's an exchange. That's what the cross is all about. It's an exchange. So one of the things that the body of Christ has fallen into is a lukewarm state of being. And he's trying to bring fire. It's an awakening that's happening. 
It's an awakening that is happening right now. And you got to remember something. Things started in Israel. Amen? This is how God decided. Uh, he chose Israel to be his land. He chose Israel to be his people. He chose Israel to be the outreach evangelistic country of the world. But they rejected. Thank God there were still some that accepted. That's how we got this written Bible. Of course, God himself had to show up there, kick some people off horses, hello? <laughs> Raise some people from the dead, heal people to get people's attention. He got their attention and they accepted him and many followed him or are still following him this day. But after a period of time, it was turned over to United States. Amen. Now United States is to infiltrate the globe to bring back the people to God. And then Israel will take over again. So we are now, right now, that's why the embassy, you're seeing the U.S. embassy being moved to Jerusalem. That's a union. See, Israel was known as the law. The United States was known as the spirit. One was known as Moses, one was known as Elijah. Amen? Amen. Who appeared when Jesus' transfigure was there? Hello, Moses and Elijah. That means things are getting ready to explode in a mighty way. And we don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. So we need to stay connected and in it. And we don't want to fall in a lukewarm state. It's called a drift. It's where people get easily swayed. It's lukewarm. They're still fighting for their lives instead of surrendering it. And he says in verse 16 again, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, hello, I become wealthy and I have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, you're miserable, you're blind, you're poor, and you're naked. Now, Jesus says I do something for you. I'm going to rescue the from here. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may what? That you may see. Listen, when he says, I want you to purchase, I want you to buy, that means it's to buy something, you purchase it. Amen? You purchase with payment. The price is cooperation. So there's an area where <laughs> if there's no payments, there's no purchase. Does everybody get it? Listen, salvation was a price God Almighty paid for me and you. It's available for me and you. But there's a price that you and I must pay, and that's a maintain connection. Maintain connection to the salvation. Maintain connection to the presence. Maintain connection to the truth. That's why he's saying, he didn't go up to the disciples and said, believe me. He went up to the disciples and said, follow me. That's what it's about. Because that's what true belief is. If you say you believe and don't follow, he looks at you and says, you're a liar. You really don't follow me. You may think you do, but your heart doesn't. It's far from me. Or you would come after me. Amen? So he says, I counsel you to buy from me. Okay, so there's payments. In other words, and then there's a, the, when people, even when people go out and buy something, if you've got payments, right? People get a loan, they buy, pay, they, if you don't make your payment, what happens? You lose it. The same thing spiritually. There's a price to pay continuously. <laughs> you know, without a continuous purchase in the spirit, then there's no escape from bondage. There must be a continuous purchase in the spirit. And then we want to continually purchase and maintain a freedom, a state of freedom. Again, the price is cooperation. Lack of cooperation will bring a self-imposed affliction. I'm going to say that again. Lack of cooperation brings a self-imposed affliction. In other words, you bring it on yourself. And that's one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to talk about. That's why these people became lukewarm because they brought it on themselves. Everybody okay? Verse 19. He 
says, as many as I love, I what? Rebuke and I what? Chasten. Therefore be what? Zealous. Why? Because they were lukewarm. Zealous is not lukewarm. Zealous is on fire. And then he says, be zealous and do what? Repent. Turn away. Turn away from that. For as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now, there's something he also said, look, at when you purchase, there's something I want you to do. I want you to anoint your eyes with eye. Anoint your eyes. Why? So you can see. Because one of the things that happens is lukewarm people become blind. They lose vision. They lose sight. Now he says, and they also lose, they lose the voice of God. So they make their decisions on carnal reasoning. He says, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him what? Hear, Hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Wow. Wow. So when there is lack of cooperation, it will bring a self-imposed affliction. So we see that those who became lukewarm is be that brought a self-imposed affliction. Afflictions come, come, afflictions come because we are not hearing the warning. We are not hearing the warning for the wrong purchase, physically and spiritually. Does everybody get it? We are not hearing. We're not hearing the warning. You know, people may agree with something they hear. Something can be over the radio. Something can be over the TV. Something, you know, Satan's got frequency. It's a frequency. And when people hear that frequency and accept it, it changes, begins to change their DNA. And people don't even realize that. They begin to change. Look, a homosexual and lesbian is not born that way. A pedophile is not born that way. A transgender is not born that way. A murderer is not born that way. An adulteress is not born that way. Fornicators are not born that way. We are born innocent. Does everybody get it? We're born innocent. We were born in sin in the presence of evil. But it didn't mean that we were sinners until we began to participate with it. Because the enemy began to release his frequency through upbringing, through environment, through association, through teachings, even through education, through the radio, through music. Remember, Lucifer is the praise and worship leader of the universe. <laughs> Boy, does he got a frequency that destroys people. And the more people listen to it, the more they become like it. Because as a man thinks, so he what? Is. Amen. So that frequency will begin to change your DNA. Is everybody okay? So we must be careful of the things that we purchase. Purchasing is also agreeing with. Spiritually and physically. Amen. Because one of the things the enemy always wants to do is get us in debt. I hate that. But you know what? When we were out there in the world, we thought that was okay because it was promoted. Everything was promoted. I mean, more charge cards came about and whatever. They figured if they can get more people in debt, it brings people in bondage. Would you go to Hebrews 10? cooperation to purchase to get out of everything that we've gotten ourselves into. Amen? Self-imposed afflictions. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Everybody there? 
Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a what? True heart, honest heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our heart Hope without what? Wavering. For he who promises what? Faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not what? Not what? Forsaken the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we what? Sin willfully, after received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That's incredible. In other words, he's connecting these two things. Forsake, assembling, you will begin to willfully sin. He just showed us right there. You will willfully sin. Why? Because you can come to assemble but not make contact. So in true reality, when the word says assembling, he's saying abide, connect, connect. That's why you worship till you drop. Everyone should leave here with a six pack by the time you're done. Amen. <laughs> we should be the healthiest church in the city. Forsaking not to assemble as some have but exhorting one another and so much more as to see the day approaching. For if we willfully sin after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That just blew once saved, always saved. Thank you. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Check this out. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the son of god underfoot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace for we know him who said vengeance is mine and i will repay says the lord and again the lord will what judge his own people see judgment begins in the house of god amen that's where judgment begins because, but see, right now, judgment is in the world also. But that's what's bringing the awakening. That's why there's so much wickedness being exposed everywhere. That's why you see the battle on the news. But you got to be careful what you listen to because most of the news is releasing Satan's frequency. And people are caught into it. Listen, anybody who doesn't believe that God is using Trump is lost. I mean, they can't see. They are lost. And anyone that promotes abortion and same-sex marriage will receive the same judgment. The Democratic Party, I don't understand. I would be afraid to associate with any of that. I can't believe that some of them call themselves Christians. It's not. That is not Christianity. God does not promote. I don't know if you saw that Ireland just approved abortion. They never have the abortion. Never approved it. They just approved it. They voted on it. Now they're going to start murdering children. You don't think things are happening? There is such a battle in the heavenlies. It's incredible. And God is dependent on me and you to strike in warfare and not get entangled in the affairs of this world. As warriors, we're not supposed to be entangled in these things. We're to trust God that he's going to provide all things. The word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added. Don't go to the phone. Go to the throne. Amen? Does everybody understand that? It's important. We're to be loosing from ourselves. I'm walking in the spirit, living in the spirit. Listen, if there's not peace, joy, and righteousness, something ain't right. <laughs> Something's not right. You're not in the spirit anymore. Is everybody okay? So the fruit of lacking uh, of the assembling will produce willful sin. 
your choice, it'll be your choice and not Christ's choices that we make. Does everybody get that? Assembling causes opportunity to purchase with the price of praise and worship. You are purchasing. Which connects us again to his presence, his word. It releases peace, joy, and righteousness. It releases power, releases revelation. Brings truth so that you and I can walk in it and be free. Free. So you're not walking in your own afflictions. You're walking away from them. Amen. Psalm 119. Self-imposed afflictions. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 65. Psalm 119, verse 65. Let's speak it. You have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your what? Word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. In other words, he wanted discernment. For I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went, what? Astray. But now I kept your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged the lie against me. But I will keep your precepts with my what? Whole heart. Their heart is as, fa as fat as grease, but I delight in your law, which is his word. It is good for me that I've been afflicted. Why? He said, now I can learn. I won't do that again. <laughs> I won't disconnect myself again. I'm going to trust in your word. I'm not going to fall in that trap again. And he said, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than what? Thousands of coins of gold and silver. Now, I want you to grab something because he fell into a self-imposed affliction because of the enticement of money. That's what the end result was. He said, man, you know what? Your word is better than all the gold and the silver that I actually got sucked into. <laughs> See, the enemy brings these enticements to God's children. So that he causes us to drift, compromise, or be complacent and lazy. The result of this drift or stray, go, when you go astray, uh, in this circumstance was caused by money. Many people drift and go astray because of money. The enemy dangles money like fish bait. He dangles materialism like fish bait. The love of money, the word says, is the root of all evil. People who trust in money and not God. That's one of the things the enemy wants to exchange. Trusting in your money instead of the Lord. That's how the world lives. That's how secularism lives, without God. Again, if you're waiting for God to do something, then you must purchase. It's called cooperate. You may be waiting on something to come. You've been praying about it. And the Lord says, look it, once do this and then I'll release the promise. Do this and I'll release the promise. He does it in everything. Unless you don't do it. In other words, you didn't get saved unless you did something first. Repented. And repented mean turn away. True sorrow. Go to Proverbs 10. <laughs> But what he's trying to do is get us back into a place where we are willing to cooperate and pay the price. Proverbs 10. Did you ever commit a vow and not fulfill it? Did you ever repent for not fulfilling it? Hello? Every one of us has made a promise some way. Hey, I'll meet you at 10 o'clock and don't show up to 10.30. Opens the door. Why? Because the enemy looks at everything that comes out of your mouth. 
He grabs it. Boom, 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 boom. When people tell me, I'll be at service this night and this night and this night, I say, don't tell me that. Why? Because you're going to bring a curse on yourself. Because you can't fulfill it. God is trying to get us out of a place of instability where we are no longer moved. He can't trust people that are easily moved, sway, or drift. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Proverbs 10, verse 16. The labor of the righteous leads to what? Life, not bondage. The wages of the wicked to what? Sin. He who keeps instruction is the way of life. But he who refuses correction goes what? Astray. And when you go astray, what do you bring on yourself? self pose affliction. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips. And whoever spreads slander is an idiot or a fool. In other words, the individual did not heed the warning from the beginning. Listen, you don't think God tries to warn us every time we do something? Every time we go make a, every decision, Holy Spirit is trying to lead us. Don't do that. Amen. Don't do that. But because people are living out of the emotion instead of out of the truth, they make emotional decisions and not godly decisions. Amen? Proverbs 12. Listen, one of the things that's important is recognizing these things. Begin to recognize these so we don't do them again. Proverbs 12.25. Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety. Anxiety, first of all, is fear. The word says, be anxious for nothing. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes what? Depression. So depression comes from fear. But a good word makes it what? Glad. Yeah. The righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them what astray again oppression is caused by fear the upright in heart must choose people places correctly why they should be chosen by the holy spirit not by us the other thing we ought to know is god's timing if it's not god's time for something it's not god's will for something even if the word of god says so it's still got to be God's timing. You know how many people have gone into bars trying to rescue people? Well, the word says go out and rescue people. I got to be evangelized. And they go into the bars and in crack houses and never come out. Because God didn't send them at that time. You know why? No connection of relationship. They're living by the letter and not by the spirit. It's different. Different. Stay away from individuals that are not connected to God's presence. Why? Because it will cause you to stray. 1 Peter 5. Oh, hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. We've all heard this multiple times. First Peter 5, verse 5, let's speak it together. Likewise, you younger people, submit, submit yourselves to your elders, though, who know better than you. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Be humble. For God does what? He resists the proud, but he gives the plan of escape, which is grace, to the humble. Therefore, what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time because it's going to come. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Submit means to submit to his counsel, his correction, and maintain a humble heart to hear and see because without a humble heart, 
you will not hear, and you will not see. Again, seek the kingdom principles, not worldly reasoning. I'm going to say that again. Seek kingdom principles and not worldly reasoning. Commit all things to the Lord first. Then it says, be sober, which means be alert. Be vigilant means be consistent, because if you're not consistent, it's impossible to be alert. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. That means he's got a big mouth. <laughs> he is releasing a frequency to begin to change your DNA. He wants you to become a carnal light instead of an eternal light. He's not afraid of people that read the Bible. He's not afraid of people that go to church. He's not afraid of people that tithe and give offerings or feed and clothe and shelter. He's not afraid of those people. He's afraid of those who are anointed. He's afraid of those because the anointing breaks all the breaks down the uh, gates of hell. He's afraid of those who will attack him. He doesn't want his kingdom being torn down. He doesn't want individuals to inner, uh, get involved and, and penetrate the heavenlies and tear down principalities, powers of darkness from wickedness in heavenly places. He doesn't want that. He wants us to get us caught up in our carnal affairs of materialism, of religiosity, and all the other things of this world. All kinds of family affairs. Not putting kingdom first. You know, I, I've always heard, well, it's, it's God, it's your family, then it's your church. No, it's God, God, God. Because without the Lord first, nothing else is going to work anyways. So the devil's got nothing but a big mouth and he's trying to get you to agree with him. Oh, why? Because if you can agree, then he can catch you up. That's a call to purchase. When you agree with something, you purchase it. Then it releases a self-imposed affliction. And it opens the door. What does the Bible say? Make no place for the devil. Be sober, be alert, be vigilant, be consistent. To what? Assemble! Because your adversary, the big mouth, goes around going to deceive you. He's looking to devour you. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Now, faith is your connection to the presence. You know, a lot of people say, I have faith. Oh, I read the word. If the word gives me faith, yeah, well, then why aren't you worshiping? Why aren't you connecting? Does everybody get it? See, there's a difference between letter. Letter is seeds. When the letter is anointing, it becomes a sword. There's a difference. And you're going to throw seeds at the devil or cut them with a sword? Oh, glory. Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Listen, every one of us has made mistakes and done stupid things. You know? But we're still to resist the enemy. He says, verse 10, but may the God of all grace, which God's grace doesn't mean that you have a right to sin. God's grace is God's plan to escape deception and the wrath of God. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you suffered because you uh, made a self imposed, because you uh, uh, went astray. After you suffered a while, he's going to use it to perfect us. He's going to use it to establish us. He's going to use it to strengthen us. And he's going to use it to settle us so we're no longer moved. If you're willing to cooperate. Amen? If we're willing to what? Cooperate. Hallelujah. We're to be alert. We're to be consistent. Or the demonic forces will outwit you and cause you to purchase something spiritually unclean. Or physically out of God's time. Amen. To bring a self-imposed affliction. It's unnecessary suffering. Unnecessary suffering. I mean, we have enough stuff to go through. Why bring more stuff on ourselves? Amen. It's unnecessary suffering. But God is willing to turn it to the good. Regardless of how stupid we become. 
Because <laughs> his love for me and you is unconditional. And he's going to use it to train us. Amen? He's going to use it to what? Train us. Only if you're willing to be trained. If you're not willing to be trained, you're going to walk around with two chains on your ankles with big balls. One's called stupid. The other one's called idiot. Psalm 34. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 34, verse 18. Is everybody there? Right, we'll start at 17, I'm sorry. The righteous cry out and the Lord does what? He hears. So is somebody, uh, the, uh, let's, let's identify righteous, somebody that's walking right with God. Amen? The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, humble, and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now these are not self-imposed afflictions. Do you understand this? But the Lord delivers them out of all of them. These are afflictions that are brought on by the enemy to prevent you from progressing. Amen? These are afflictions of persecution. It says that he guards all, he says he delivers them out of all of them and he guards all his bones, none of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Again, it takes humility and a desire to receive, believe, and execute the counsel of the Lord that's given to me and you. Does everybody get it? It's going to take that for everything that he gives us. He's always trying to rescue me and you. But again, there's a difference between the self-imposed affliction and affliction honoring Christ. Self-imposed afflictions do not honor God. Amen? Luke 7. Although many people blame the devil, but they're the ones that opened up the door to the devil. Oh, I may be doing something right. The devil's attacking me. No, you brought it on yourself. Let's cut loose those two ball chains. And say, stupid and idiot. <laughs> Luke 7, verse 18. Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus and saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Look at what happened to John the Baptist. Man, he was out there, man, baptizing, calling those Pharisees and Sadducees vipers and serpents. And he was preparing a way, and he gets arrested. It was a righteous affliction. Amen? But while he was in this affliction, something happened. I mean, come on, the dude was born with the Holy Spirit, man. He was doing all kinds. I mean, the guy created that cereal, nut and honey. <laughs> right? He had a big company. I mean, he wore strange clothes. He was, no, it wasn't like he wasn't recognized. <laughs> and his diet was insane. But praise God, it was a protein diet he was on. But here he gets, he gets arrested, he's in jail, and now the enemy's attacking him. Doubt comes. You know what the first thing the enemy does is bring reason. Carnal reasoning is when people try to juggle things common sense-wise in the carnality realm. See, you can't do that. You got to get away from that. You got to get connected so you hear. 
So anyways, what happened was, man, he, he began to doubt. And he sent two disciples and find out if this is really the one. When he's the one that was right in front of Jesus, when he baptized him. And he saw the dove and everything, right? And he gets arrested. He gets separated. No longer could he assemble. What happened? Reasoning. Doubt. Can happen to anyone. So what happened was, in, when, in verse 20, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour, he cured many infirmities and what? Afflictions. I want you to know afflictions can bring, self-imposed afflictions can bring sickness to your body. And evil spirits into many blind, it also bring blindness. And he gave them what? Sight. Sight. And Jesus answered and said to him, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, and that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have a gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Ooh, praise God. 2 Timothy 4. Welcome to Sunday morning training session, Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. Second Timothy chapter four. Is everybody there? You know, I, I just really believe that this is kind of like a reality check. Now let's get checked. Let's you know. And like a pilot before he leaves, he has to go through a checklist. Or that thing ain't flying. Amen? And we need to go through our checklist so we can fly. Verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out, convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering, uh, and what? Teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We are seeing that happen now. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, in other words, anxious ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure what? Afflictions, these are righteous afflictions, not self-imposed. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your mission. Fulfill your call. We are to endure afflictions, persecutions, rejections from the world, and those who have turned back to the world. We must maintain the course, put our trust completely in the Lord. We are watching, again, the greatest move of God, the shaking of the world. This is a global thing. And again, those who can't see that God is using Trump in this generation, they are blind. And they are lost. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. In verse 18. Romans 8, 18. Self-imposed afflictions. Hallelujah. You know, we bring on afflictions in all kinds of areas. In verse 18, let's speak it together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For this earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, 
Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of what? The bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now hold on to this for a second. We are seeing earthquakes. Do you know that there's over 4,400 earthquakes globally this year? It's incredible. People don't realize it. Volcanoes. Look at what's going on in Hawaii right now. Tsunamis, cyclones, fires, floods. All of these things is because the earth is groaning. Why is it groaning? There's a shaking. There's an eruption going on. Why? Because right now God is invading every area and beginning to remove the corruption. He's beginning to lift it and expose corruption so that everything can be turned over to the children of God. We are in that state right now. It's not time for Satan to take over this world yet. First, the righteous must come up and the greatest harvest ever, then Satan can have the rest of it. But in the meantime, we have a job to do. Is everybody okay? Now, watch this, verse 22. Now remember, this corruption is to, uh, uh, I'm going to verse 21 again, because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Everything is going to be supposed to be delivered to us. This is why there's such a shaking and awakening right now. It's going to be released to us. It'll be for a short time. I don't know how long. I'm hoping seven years. There'll be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. So we can grab hold of it and grab the greatest harvest ever before Jesus returns. Now remember, Jesus will return through the body of Christ before he physically returns. He will return through the body, then he'll call the body back home. And then there'll be three and a half years of hell on earth like there's never been before. Verse 22, let's speak it. We know that the whole creation, what? Groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Wow. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan with ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So you and I are groaning, waiting for a new body. But we're not getting that until we're taken away. But in the meantime, the earth is going groaning to be turned over to the children of God. For we, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance, which is called Patience. Go to Second Timothy three. Oh, hallelujah. Second Timothy three, verse ten. Let's speak it, but you have what? Carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance. Persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch and Icium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. You are going to find more persecutions coming. But the word says something. No one formed against you can prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you shall be exposed, removed, and condemned. That's what's happening now. But you must decree it for your life. You must decree it. You must decree Psalm 91 protection for your life. It must come out of your mouth. Verse 12, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Hello, do you desire to live godly? Well, then you're going to be persecuted. I'm not talking about self-imposed afflictions. I'm talking about righteous persecutions. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving in what? And being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you've learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and from childhood you have Known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you what? Wise for salvation through faith, which is in 
Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. The battle against deception is to relieve prophetic words of truth, to free souls. We release prophetic words of truth. What you're hearing right now is a prophetic word of truth. Many disconnected from God's presence and word have gone astray to affliction. Again, the word says, make no place for the devil. And don't associate with people that are. How stupid can we be and still breathe? Come out from among them and be separate. Don't get unevenly yoked. Galatians 6. Galatians 6, and then one more scripture. They can go out and teach it. Fresh Rhema from Daddy. First, you got to believe it, Amen. receive it, and execute it. Galatians 6, 7, don't be what? Don't be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, he will what? He's going to reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap what? Corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And don't grow weary while doing good. In other words, keep sowing in the Spirit. Don't become complacent, lazy, and compromising. Stay consistent. For in due season, God is going to bless you. It will come. Amen? For in due season, we will reap if we do not what? Lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those of the household of faith. Maintain your connection by sowing in the spirit and disconnect from sowing in the flesh. Amen? And I want to close at Psalm 16. Now, self-imposed afflictions. You know, when people get frustrated, upset, whatever, they have a tendency to run. When they get offended, they have a tendency to run. Some of them run to the refrigerator. Some of them run to the phone. Some of them run to mommy and daddy. Some of them run to everywhere else but the throne. Amen? Amen? And then what happens is if you don't run to the throne first before you get direction from the Lord of what to do, then you'll bring, you will bring a self-imposed affliction on yourself. Why? Because you may eat too much and get a stomachache. Amen? Or you may go back, you may call someone from the old and they may convince you to come over and the next thing, one thing leads to another. Or you, unless you have a Another arena that God has freed you from, it's called a shopping addiction, spending money. Amen. I feel better when I spend money. That's crazy. You should only feel better in God's presence. Everybody got it. That's where you feel better. If that isn't happening, something's wrong. Psalm 16, verse 1. <laughs> So be careful what you do when you're offended and you're struggling. Again, I, some people say they're struggling. They really aren't struggling. It's just they accepted the voice of the enemy. I'm struggling. You know what they did? They purchased because they agreed. They purchased. I said it to my neighbor the other day. My, my neighbor, she was standing out there, and I, and, uh, I said, oh, well, I, I forgot what I asked her. And uh, she, she said, well, no, no. And she goes, I, I asked her a question. She goes, no, I got bipolar. I got this. I got that. I said, who told you that? She said, the doctor. I said, and who told him that? The doctor. So you believe the doctor? Anyways. I ended up giving her a prayer booklet 
I said, here, you can need to sow this, man. And then I gave her my testimony. I said, do you realize that you're talking to someone that had an encounter with God Almighty? A personal visitation from God. I'm telling you the truth. You need to get connected. You don't, you, it's not about bipolar, this, that. She named them loads of stuff up. I thought, whoa, she's going to explode. And she was just, she's not working. And she's a, a baseball coach. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. I can imagine her on the field, you know. Because she's on all kinds of medication. I don't know whether she's on home plate or first base. I don't know. You know. <laughs> but I'm praying for her. But it's amazing in how much purchase she has made of corruption. She's bringing the self-imposed affliction because of all of the purchase she made by agreeing with what other people have said and what doctors have said. Not that there isn't some value to what a doctor says. Does everybody understand that? I don't want to discorrect that. But, you know, I don't believe in doing methadone and get off of drugs and alcohol. <laughs> Anyways, that's called demon management, not freedom. Amen? <laughs> demon management. Why well, I have oppression. I need medication. No, you need God's presence. That's why he's called the most high. Amen? You just need to go get high. This way. Psalm 16, verse something. One. Let's speak it. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. My soul you have said to the Lord. You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance in my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me what? Counsel. Did you get counsel today? Yes. Praise God. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Listen, if we would just set the Lord before us in everything, we wouldn't bring self-imposed afflictions on our own. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed that's been parted in us grow root, penetrate every part of our being and members. Protect it with the blood of Jesus and let it prosper to bring us the wisdom and knowledge and discern that we need so that we may be sons and daughters and warriors of the Most High God as third dimensional warriors, armed and dangerous in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring up any tithes or offerings.